Hey, Steve. How you doing? I am well. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. Leverage, she said we might be a couple minutes late. Uh, Constance, you're in the wrong section. You need to add yourself further up. You know, oh, that, that's me. No, that's oh, me. Sorry. She was on the call <laughs> last week. I just, <laughs> I just oh, realized okay. she wasn't added to the attendee list last week, so I just fixed that too. <laughs> sorry. We're in the Google Doc and adding attendees. Michael, at this point in the morning, like I don't function, so like Steve knows he's just going to start typing things for me. You have the excuse, but here it's 5 p.m., so I don't have that excuse. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, like you're just lower. adapted to our time zone. That's all. You're being that's, very yeah. care, like you know, very caring about that. That's true. True. Yeah, I'm very empathic about it. True. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Anyone following the ambassador rename for CNCF? There's a rename for ambassador. What? Well, so, so Ambassador is trying to donate the, its component to CNCF, but uh, the, the company used to be called something else, but the company renamed themselves to Ambassador. As a result, they can't upload a component called Ambassador for IP reasons. So they had to rename the component that they're uploading, uh, and it's now called Emissary Ingress, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. <laughs> So the company was called something else. They created a open source project called Ambassador that became popular. Company became called Ambassador. Now, if they want to go in the CNCF open source project that they're now named that they're now named after, needs to rename it. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, emissary ingress just rolls right off the tongue. So I it, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Arctic always has the best Zoom name. Love He's it. Thanos. He's Thanos. <laughs> yeah, please don't snap. Um, is Thanos the one with the glove with all the little pretty rocks? Is that the one? Yeah, I think he's really into jewelry. He really loves that glove. <laughs> yeah. What's going on? <laughs> I know this, the project was actually named because of that, right? To I would assume, yeah. Delete all Prometheus with Fuentanos. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the, the other way around. I thought Marvel named it after ye folks. <laughs> joining us i think he had like some yeah he said he, he will be running late i think we might need to start otherwise sure yeah we have a very yeah. ambitious agenda right yeah exactly
Okay, so hello everyone, and let's go with the agenda. And the question, first question would be, you know, what, what would be the order that makes sense? So there are some quick topics potentially that we could get first. What do you think about doing that? Yeah, that probably makes sense because otherwise, like the hotel stuff's probably gonna take up most of the call. So if the other ones are kind of quick, let's let's sort of jump through them. Okay, so next one is like Arthur um, alternative for streaming API monitoring. Um, do you think how much time you would need for that? Let's say. I think this one is, is, would be better to leave to the next meeting. Uh, yep. I was expecting some colleagues to join me, but they couldn't join today. Okay, moving to, to the next one. And then we have some quick checkup on the white paper observability with Simone and you. Yeah, so, so maybe I turn on my camera when I speak. Um, so we have, we have parked this, um, this paper for it's been quite a long time. We have talked about January, but then we it started quite well. So the beginning of the paper, um, I'm actually quite okay with the content there, but then we started having gaps because we were not sure about the structure. It was basically Arthur that did most of the work here. So, so credit where it's due, um, but then he didn't have more time to continue um, editing the paper. And I think we should, um, we should continue and have one version for, um, for people here to review. So this, this has been abandoned a little bit. Um, and I, I think we should, yeah, we should take it up. And some people have experience in more areas than others. Uh, maybe more in, in application, others more in infrastructure. And I think, um, yeah, this is how maybe we should share a little bit small sections with people that have more experience in different areas and then the load is not too much. I mean, writing one, two, three paragraphs and then somebody stitching the text together, it's, it's not a big, um, something big to ask. I, I think Oh, someone needs to step up as some sort of leader and yeah. uh, I was trying to do that some months ago when I was an unemployed but since I, I I'm now employed I, I have limited time yeah maybe you can share the link in the chat so people that were not yeah. here before um, can open the article yes thank you Okay, I, I guess we are looking for someone unemployed then. Oh, but someone that has, um, that, uh, I mean, someone that is willing to do the work. Well, I guess- I mean, calling, calling for contributions and, uh, I mean, stitching the text together and trying to get like a readable version, I can do that. Uh, but I cannot be the main person filling the gaps that we currently have. We have some, uh, so in, at least where we start more in the part of data visualization and exploration, um, they're basically empty. So there are some names that were written here as candidates. I think Michael was one of them for use cases. Arthur was also here, like, just writing something about beginner's approach, but there is there there are some other sections that are still empty. No, I think that's a good direction, right? Like, first of all, there is no expectations to like, I don't know, finish it super, super quickly, right? It's community driven. So it's okay for some periods to be taking longer, right? So um, I would see this as like some community driven uh, piece of documentation about observability. So I think we just need to yeah, announce it more and maybe split essentially 
interesting topics uh, that have gaps mm -hmm. in it um, and just yeah try to ask personally as well people who might be interested um, so proposing candidates i think that's that's a really nice solution um, but yeah arthur and, and simon it's not no expectations that you will write that on your own i think that's that's definitely not what's happening so um i would say announce it better and and try to gather more people on on those and uh, and kind of one way would be to also make sure people are motivated. So some kind of goal of this document is, is well established as like, you know, this is yeah. what, why we're doing this, for example. Yeah, so I read it. So the initial motivation of this document was basically to consolidate, to have something that comes from CNCF when somebody talks about, you know, high level and observability, but also going a little bit more in, into details like use cases or if you're a perspective, if you're an application developer versus you are an infrastructure engineer um, dealing with observability and some other things that are um, happening in the community as well. So we don't, we don't have a very fixed structure there, but I, I would very much like to have um, some input from people here that work in, in various areas to, to make this document happen. And when you talk about announce, Bartos, you're talking about um, using our Slack channel or going wider with that than that, actually? Yeah, I would, I would, you know, um, mention this wider and say, you know, uh, we, we can definitely, um, you know, make sure this has some structure and, and go into good direction, but um we can definitely ask you know and say on twitter and hey join our work group and um yeah just make it more known because i think it's only you know a few people or like at least this six observability that is only kind of seeing that and just having more traction will you know give people more motivation to also contribute so that's that's um my idea that's what usually worked before There's de definitely interest from, from the wider community as well. I'm, I'm lurking on the Chinese version of the observability uh, community and, and they also expressed interest to, to contribute there and, and then you know, subsequently translate it into, into Mandarin. So um, I don't know what, what the best way is, a tweet or a, you know um, maybe we can even do a, a webinar or whatever on it, but I agree we should definitely broaden, broaden the message out there i know i have jumped in but like from agenda or initial thing from the from the working group we said that um or sick we said that uh, the canonical places are slack and the mailing list with uh, the mailing list being a must and the slack being recommended that being said i do think that we would benefit from, from also having pu more public channels. So I think we need to split between people who take active interest of working within and moving within the SIG and then external communication of the SIG. Uh, but again, I'm jumping in in the middle course. I had a leadership thing at Grafana, which ran over and I'm sorry. So I don't know uh, if, if that was helpful or complete hogwash for the context of right now. I think it was worth it. I, we were we was we were not thinking about mailing list. That's a good idea. Yeah. And do you have other groups that I mean in in the observability realm that would be interested here as well, Richie, that you have been involved or others as well? Open telemetry or some other folks that are in other groups that are but are not here. I mean, there's a bit, we, we have Prometheus and the wider Prometheus community, um, which we can leverage for stuff. We have open telemetry 
Um, there are some friendly uh, conferences, uh, which which we can also try and uh, put this to. The main channel, I think, is just talk to CNCF, and I can take that action item to see how how they want to amplify stuff which we publish. Um, yeah. No, yeah. I can share it. I can share it with Thanos community, Prometheus, uh, Jager, and like totally. Yeah, it's a it's observability topic that. Yeah, I mean, at least from the tracer, from tracing part, uh, I forgot his name now, but the guy from Jaeger, he could he could do some. I mean, he could at least read something here and say this is rubbish or or give some pointers that would be interesting. Yeah, Yuri. Yeah, definitely. Yuri is his name, right? Yeah. He doesn't need to write himself, but if he gives some some shape that we we can follow, that that helps. Uh, Simone, do, do you want to talk about uh, more in depth on Slack later? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. But mailing list and other folks in the observability groups that are not here um, that would be probably my first bet before we go on twitter with um, let's say a document that is not in a great shape yet i would go on twitter if it's for, for calling to call for people that would be like something that doesn't have so many gaps that we have now I but if you're okay doing that I think getting feedback early is good. So as long as we communicate communicate clearly at what stage any particular thing is, um, we should we should try and be aggressive in getting feedback early. Uh, but also, I'm taking a little bit of a time check because we spent, mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh, yeah. So just to to have the one thing, because I do expect that hopefully finishing the due diligence for open telemetry will take the rest. NNA who might be on the call or might not be on the call took a step at writing uh, a, a end user guide about distributed tracing. Uh, so yep. just look at it, give feedback if possible. Uh, and I think that's already it what we what we're talking about that. So let's let's start with uh, or continue with the open telemetry due diligence. Mm -hmm. Steve Good. is here, I see. Yes, perfect. Yep, I'm here. Let me share. So. All right, here we go again. Welcome, folks. Uh, number three, uh, Richie, do you still have the action item here? I mean, we talked about it on the TOC call. Uh, at least Bartik and I were for there. Do you want to follow up on this one, or what's the next steps for number three? I failed to follow. You mean on the, on the um, question of Sub project, yes, no. I failed to to email them, as you probably noticed. Uh, did any guidance come from the TUC call? What was your take, Barta? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a good question. I think there was nothing, uh, no clear decision. There was like one opinion from this was that, yeah, it's um, it's kind of you know important to make sure the, the you know the incubation is high bar, so we expect things to be you know kind of stable. But she other um, mentioned other aspect where you know um, there might be you know, communities and some features are alpha and it's graduated so it's fine, and then um, kind of I navigated that you know metrics and, and logging are kind of important parts of the observability space, and uh, you know missing those are kind of a major major kind of um, part of, the, of open telemetry. However, Steve, you pointed that there are so many other aspects like SDKs, um, the whole collector stuff is like many, many things. And, um, and there were two interesting um, experience kind of um, from Argo, I guess. And to be honest, I didn't get the direction of it. <laughs> Was it that yes, we should um, just um, if if there is a movement behind that, if there is like a strong community that we can trust that you know those big even chunks of unfinished work will be worth kind of recommendation. Um, I think that was the message, but I might be wrong, Steve. <laughs> That's what I got. So 
maybe then to take a step back, would it make sense to, on the SIG level, just say that there needs to be a decision from TOC and just bouncing this out of out of SIG level? Because, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, no, I think ahead. that makes sense. I think that makes sense. Uh, the, the way I read into the Argo thing is it looks like Argo is going up for graduation and has a similar problem in that it's a big project. There are plenty of aspects that are experimental or alpha or whatever you want to call it. Uh, and they too have to deal with it. So I, I don't personally, I don't think that SIG observability needs to solve this problem. Just raise it to the TOC and the TOC needs to make that call. Bartek, would you also be fine with this? Yeah, I'm happy with that, yeah. It looks like, yeah, community is kind of happy with this approach as well, so yeah. Okay, so let's revisit that point, I guess. Um, also, we should uh, close all the old comments, uh, ideally, during the call. So we have a paper trail of them being closed. So I mean, leave it as such. Requests a decision from CNCF TOC, so we can just leave it, or should we strengthen that? Clarify maybe. Okay, how about um, wrong color? <sighs> or. Or can we just mark it in a different color, put it on top that we request this thing and move on? Because we, we will not solve this within this call anyway. So I would much rather optimize for, for speed within within the document. Yeah. Is it, okay. So I will mark it as orange, but I will so call for consensus. I'm marking this orange. And I'll also copy it at the top as a reference of the document, and then we just bounce it to TOC. All agree? Anyone disagreeing? Good. Uh, regarding the comment above, since we do, do want to clear things out, right? So the we have the adopters page updated. There was a request around adding different signals. Uh, that's a little bit harder because adoption is on a client library perspective and I've already received feedback from the adopters saying, look, we're not going to keep updating that page every single time we change something in our environment. Uh, so I'd like to propose uh, the update that I basically wrote, which is that given tracing is stable, instrumentation libraries adopted are for the tracing signal today. And for the collector, adoption is for tracing and metrics today. So I've clarified where we are uh, without actually updating that page because I think it'll be a one-time update that's constantly out of sync. Adoption is from the components perspective, not necessarily from the signals uh, perspective. Yeah, Steve, that's a good point. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you, Steve. Cool. Uh, so any objections to resolving this comment? Um, can we look at the table just once more? Because I sure. and I'm already looking at this from your link, but I'm not. happy to. That's one. Okay. okay, there's still a few a few on the adopters page. I haven't been able to track down yet to update their specific areas, okay. but I will get that done once I get back. So, just from the formal standpoint, does it make sense that you that you also just say this is current as of timestamp? So it's clear if it's out of date, that, but not an actual problem. So just it's clear as of what time the current state is given. So I checked adopter pages for other CNCF projects. No one has such a mark. Like I would just use the history. You can kind of see when things okay, are committed. You can go back and check it. OK. Okay, so as we have the comment that we need to review this, then at least we need to make a call for consensus on if that is a way forward. I, given the yep. project, but I think yes, but so should we resolve that? Or let me rephrase. Unless there are objections, I will just close the comment and the to-do with the basis of what Steve just, says, uh, just said. All agreed, anyone disagreeing? Very good. Awesome. Next one. 
Uh, there's a question about fork repositories and such. So everything in the adopters page is adopting upstream. Uh, there's no easy way to kind of track this aspect either. Uh, I mean, open to suggestions, even when vendors are listed, like vendors are adopting it internally as well. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a distribution. The solution here long term is there will be guidance from the governance committee of, of OTEL on distributions, uh, and it'll be a lot clearer. To date, it's just a from the adopters page perspective, the assumption is you're using upstream today. But there are distributions. So your statement is that everything, all distributions are equivalent to the distribute, uh, sorry, all distributions are equivalent or are considered equivalent to upstream as of today. Is, is that a yeah. fair so if you go to the community page, uh, it lists vendors supported on OpenSlimetry. And so here are all the vendors. And if they have a distribution, links to those things are applied. Or if they just have exporters, then it would link to the exporter specifically. Uh, the goal long term is that uh, uh, Otel will likely certify distributions just like Kubernetes does today. Uh, it's not doing that currently. Yeah, I mean, just to add to Steve's point, uh, we are working on uh, the requirements for certification of distributions and, and we'll be publishing that uh, clearly, but uh, uh, you know, keeping in line with uh, so similar guidelines that Kubernetes also has. So as Bartek raised this and as Fish is not on the call, Bartek, would you be fine if we just added this to the uh, to that section as just said and move on? Yeah, I would be curious, like, uh, can you tell quickly, roughly, like how the certification would, would look like? Maybe I'm not familiar with Kubernetes one. Uh, because, you know, the concern is that those distributions can be anything right now and just claim open telemetry incubation, you know, incubated someday, uh, you know, stage, and they will do anything inside there. And we don't have any control because it's like, yeah, some other project. So I wonder, yeah, what, what are the measurements? I mean, some of the measurements again, Mertes, are, are um, obviously uh, not only clear guidelines on, you know, what is uh, integrated from a component standpoint, uh, whether that's the collector components, whether that's Prometheus, uh, you know, end-to-end -end support or um, other components which are in the SDKs, uh, that is the library implementations, but also uh, stability guarantees, whether that those are, you know, performance guarantees, testing guarantees, support and maintainability uh, guarantees for long term support, uh, and, and really requirements, you know, itemizing each one of those and, and being compliant with the baseline that is set up by the project. Yeah, and again, we're not trailblazing here. Like, here's the Kubernetes one. It's a GitHub repo. You can take a look at kind of the instructions. They have automated processes that you run that actually conforms. Make sure that your distribution conforms to the guidelines. It publishes results. Like, we're not going to implement something new here. We're going to follow something very similar to this. Yeah. So we can just write one or two sentences into, into that section and that would be enough for you, Bartik, that basically we don't have to discuss in detail how it's done, that just that it is done like Kubernetes? Yeah, totally, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, you know, block too much. I feel, no, I definitely this helped. Um, it gives me some, you know, there is some kind of constraint on, on, on those. Also, just to add a bit of color, um, just from working at two vendors on this project previously and, and uh, uh, talking to the others, like just because the project is so focused on data collection, I think most of the vendors and, and contributors are racing as fast as they can to have as little proprietary code, like trying to push as much as they can into, into the core OSS yep. so that they don't have to continue maintaining it and so they can, and they can share it with everyone else. Uh, if this was a project that had a back end for processing, I think the incentives there would be very different. Uh, but because it's just data collection, most of the vendors don't want to specialize in data collection and they really don't, they honestly do not want to have their own data collection systems long term. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I added a quick one sentence with the link if that works for folks. Yeah, 
<laughs> so, um, there were mostly opinions from me and uh, and open telemetry um, guests here, and I wonder if kind of I invited in, invited Peter. Maybe Peter, you want to give some I don't know, I don't know some some. What do you think about that? Because I kind of I don't know. Like I feel like. Um, um, you had a kind of, kind of nice experience on, on those monitoring and collection stuff already. Yeah, um, I can say a few words here. I'm, I'm, I'm here as sort of like, um, Bartek and I were having a conversation about this space, um, just kind of informally, and we touched on some of this stuff. And so I'm, I'm like here, I guess it's sort of maybe just an outside perspective. I don't know if this is actually what anyone wants or needs, uh, but um, I'll just happily summarize um, just a few things. When I learned about this whole initiative, um, kind of the, the points that got raised in my mind. So just a bit of background, I like was uh, for a long time deep in observability stuff in kind of like Go world and a function of microservice uh, uh, universe. And um, I, I actually can claim uh, that I, uh, was the one who invented the three pillars of observability, if you can believe it, uh, in one fateful meeting uh, with some key players back in the day. So anyway, uh, accolades, check. Um, uh, what, what is interesting to me about this whole conversation is that what it reveals about the role that the CNCF plays as it selects projects to like put little gold stars on, right? Um, because my understanding was that the things that it lifts up into incubation and what are the other like statuses that there are? There's like approved, vetted. Sandbox, incubation, graduation. Yeah. Graduation, yes, yes, yes. So my understanding was that as projects like move through those stages and, and get like check marks from the CNCF, it is because they have proven themselves in the like developer space. Like they're in use, they are like de facto standards for these things and maybe not all the maybe not all of them have to be all de facto standards, but like basically that's what the CNCF is doing is like saying, hey, these things are good. You can trust these things. But what it feels like is happening here is like uh, th there are a collection of expressed user needs that are real and need solutions, and um, uh, the Open Telemetry Group is like uh, collecting them and then like trying to suggest products that solve them in, in various ways, ultimately solve all of them, but like haven't yet done so. And so it feels like either it's super premature or it reflects that the CNCF isn't actually about what I thought the projects that it lifted up the properties of the things were, it's, it's actually something else. It's actually like maybe uh, uh, building solutions that it's like customer companies or whoever is like uh, following the CNCF to things they need. Maybe it's that. And maybe that's okay. I don't know, but that's not what I understood. Anyway, yeah, it, it, this is my perspective. And like maybe the most concrete thing I sh should have maybe opened with this is like, uh, so like before Prometheus was in that process, I knew like tons of people who use Prometheus, right? Um, in my like space in my role, but like, I don't know anyone who uses open telemetry, right? They know of it. But I haven't met anyone who like has ditched their Prometheus instrumentation library for Hotel, right? Um, like a couple have tried, but like it, it just hasn't happened yet, right? Um, so that's what's in interesting to me. Uh, and that's, I don't know, maybe worth discussion. Maybe it's all already been said. I don't know. What do you think? I think Peter, uh, so, again, you bring up some good points, but uh, I would say that, you know, having rolled out AWS's distribution for open telemetry, we have several customers who are using not only um, open telemetry as a commodity agent, um, if you will, but also you know, uh, using Prometheus. And it is a win-win for both ecosystems. It's not uh, you know, re replacement necessarily. It's, it's also you know, several customers, large customers moving towards um, building out their Kubernetes-based uh, ecosystems as well as other compute support. And, and uh, I don't think uh, it is fair to say that because uh, yeah. there are several customers and I'm happy to bring you a list if, if needed. 
My, my, yeah. is, also, my, my understanding is that they're all private though. Is that correct? Like uh, uh, no. corporate customers, yeah. No, no, that's not true. That's like maybe from the AWS right point here. of view, but like this is from the adopters page, but also like, so I think also, so Peter wondering like, who are the people you talk to? Cause I think one thing that we need to actually address about open telemetry <laughs> and what CNCF has actually done is CNCF is used to only talking to like niche cloud native companies. Right, who are used to implementing everything on their own, but where actually CNCF is going is actually bridging the gap from everyone who used to be on prem. Yep, and that's where open telemetry is actually making the biggest inroad. Where it's actually bringing all these companies that like, because if you look at the attendees at KubeCon now, and a lot of the open source summits, there are a lot of companies that like they're banking companies. There are a lot of companies who like still are kind of doing on prem or oh. moving to cloud slowly, yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're going to be actually wait. Right, and they're going to be actually not using their own implementation of things, but trying to find like libraries there. And also, especially when it comes to observability space, where like you know, like okay, yes, coming from Splunk, like we are, we are quote unquote, you can call us evil overlords, right? But a lot of our customers That's Splunk. don't have time to implement their own like implementation for They're going to want to use libraries because, from their point of view, it's not worth it. And that's well, like, and our adopters list is actually showing that we have companies that are using our instrumentation and our collector. And the one other thing I'd add is like the criteria for incubation. Uh, I don't know if everyone's kind of familiar with the CNCF yeah. terms, but there's no criteria of like in the incubation status being the de facto standard, replacing other standards, like being the only solution. None of those are criteria for incubation. They're, they're like, listed I, here. I didn't, and yeah. I, I didn't mean to imply like like the only choice or like uh, whatever, but but like wide adoption. And, and this, the question to me was like, uh, who am I talking to, right? Which is completely fair. Uh, I, I totally, I, everyone has their own like little lens through which they- Yeah, you all have each, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so like the people I talk to are uh, largely like open source communities and adjacent uh, like Slack rooms and and mailing lists and, and GitHub issues. So like stuff that is public in that sense, uh, often um, products of uh, corporate environments, but largely not. And I think in equal measure, um, a lot of uh, small, medium, some large uh, startups and companies that I consult for, um, often in a Go capacity, often in a observability capacity. So, so actually what's interesting story. though, is that Go tends to be like adoption of Go tends to be more associated with a cloud native company and not mm -hmm. for those who sure. are in, right? Yeah. And as I was agree. like shown from part of our adoption list, it's actually people who are bridging the gap from coming from on-prem and hybrid worlds. Right, the people for whom OpenStack has completely failed. So on to the next thing. Here we go. Let's try it again. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. So like, I, I have no visibility into them, and and if that if that is your like user base, then I, I can't speak to it, right? Because uh, I, I have no idea. Well, it's part uh, of it, right? Like yeah. that adoption page shows, like we have people like Shopify, like massive cloud native company. You mentioned one thing. Sorry, you mentioned one thing which is a little bit worrisome for me, and that is standards. Um, CNCF is not a standardization body, right? It's it's not a. It is about. Sorry. It's not a standardization body like W three C or ITF, right? It's not about we are not creating, um, you know, here declaring this is the standard. Um, I view and based on the conversations that I have with our customers, I can vouch for that that um, there is certainly a huge interest there, especially around standardization across mm -hmm. different signal types. And, you know, um, the clear mandate that we have here in the SIG is to provide that due diligence in terms of the requirements that we see here in the, in the process, and that is adoption. And that, to me, looking at, at what is there is clearly given. Um, I really don't want to get into that standardization discussion and saying like, you know, there is a standard and, you know, is OTEL the old dominating standard or not? Uh, we have already seen that. I'm, I'm sorry for bringing the word into the conversation. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's not right, relevant. Right. I, I just let, yeah. let's, let's stay clear of this standard yeah. there. It is a sure. specification and there is a clear uh, uptake and, and adoption there. At yeah. Least what I see. But okay, okay, so maybe this is an important point. Does that uptake have to be organic or can it be sort of like uh, outward sales driven, <laughs> for lack of a better word? So for it doesn't matter. matter. For the context, okay. so mm -hmm. document it, uh, it. It is much more about um, the direction, 
And I don't have any problem letting this, this discussion continue. I just want us to use the time deliberately so we can also focus back on the document or we can discuss this more. Both is totally fine with me. Um, maybe one point, and I, obviously I have like 20 heads and I'm, I'm very much torn. I, I would, from my perspective, most Prometheus and Prometheus ecosystem users are not truly cloud native. I would say more of them are in the, in the brownfield data center space, just because of sheer numbers. Um, but, oh no, I'm already going into discussion. So should we continue back on the, uh, with the document or should we discuss uh, the, the points Peter brought up? Both is fine with me. I just wanted to, um, us to be deliberate here. Yeah, I guess my comment would be if it's directly related to one of the questions in the due diligence that requires consensus, then I think we should absolutely drill into it. Uh, if not, then we should probably either create another doc like Bartik did or like schedule another time to have that conversation. Uh, Cause I think the goal is to try to get through this doc from a consensus perspective. And uh, if it's related, like if it's an incubation criteria thing and we're not gonna meet that criteria for whatever reason, that's the, the primary focus I think we should have for, for this audience. General feeling of the room. I mean, I still think, you know, does the project have production deployment that are high quality and high velocity? We kind of navigate that for tracing, yes, but for rest, no. And then we, so it's worth discussing, but that's only my opinion. But based on what the TOC said, that's a moot point, isn't it? So should we, as a as a poss possible consensus, should we then just say that we are that yes, tracing has the adoption, uh, the rest is coming. Yeah, and can we do that? Can we do it from a signals perspective? Like, do we have consensus that tracing is adopted, and maybe we don't have consensus that metrics and logs are, and explicitly call that out here? Th that's where I'm trying to go. That we that we have a consensus push position of, of everyone in this call here that that is a statement. Of course, I, like, again, I have 20 different heads here, so I'm, I, I'm very deliberate about which one I'm, I'm currently wearing. Um, but for the tracing aspect, I do think there is no debate that there is wide adoption. Yeah, agree. So, okay, then let's, okay, let's try this and then we are overriding the other thing again. <sighs> so bear with me, this is just the first step. And uh, Steve, I think you need to reload your screen because I'm not seeing what I'm typing. Yeah, it's pause. Sorry, there you go. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Um, that's similar to how, how the Prometheus things work. Um, if you saw the recording there, we, we nail down one consensus and then we build possible consensus on top of it. Of course, that has shown to, to take the least time to discuss. Um, so as a first point of consensus, new consensus, of course we're actually revisiting, but okay. SIG observability has consensus that there is wide and organic adoption of open telemetry tracing. All agreed, anyone disagreeing? Okay, just for the record, I'm uppercasing that one T. Okay, so should we make a, what's a positive statement here? Steve Bartek, do you have any wording suggestions? You want to basically note something about metrics and logs without making it sound negative. Is that the, the goal? Yes, because I yeah I don't believe in in making yeah precisely, but while still retaining the concern of Bartek and Peter. Yeah, I mean I yeah think... I would say that that maybe from my side quickly yeah metric and logging are not in incubation kind of quality state. That isn't, but based on what the TOC said, right, is that there could be parts of the project that aren't at the same level. 
and everything. Maybe, maybe yeah, that's not making a statement about what we what what. That's not making a statement about the whole project. This is just trying to split out the subcomponents so we in the SIG can find a consensus, and then just bounce this to TOC and they can decide whatever. Because I don't think we will be making progress otherwise, and I would like to to uh, finish the document at some point. Yeah, I guess one suggestion yeah. I would have is that there, I, I kind of raised this in the TOC call, so some of you were on there, some of you were not, so I think I'll just repeat it for the entire audience. From an open symmetry project perspective, all of the SIGs have components. Those components are adopted or not adopted. The primary components today are the instrumentation uh, libraries, which are language specific, and the collector. They are an, a reference implementation on top of the specification. So you have a dependency on the specification to make that work. All of those components are then tied to signals. Uh, I feel like the last two meetings uh, in this audience, we've been focusing a lot on the signals, but it says, does the project have pro production grade deployments that are high quality and high velocity? For all of the components, the answer is yes. The, the nuance there is that that is a yes for tracing signals. And I think that's what we've all kind of gotten hung up so far is that, well, what about the metrics and logging signals? And then there's kind of the back and forth on does that matter or not? So maybe one way to approach this is, do we have consensus that all of the components in open telemetry are adopted uh, first? Then we could make a note about the tracing spe uh, signal specifically, which is what the line in green currently captures. And then the final one would just be more of a note uh metrics and logs are not stable yet and are not part of this consensus or something like just articulate that there are additional signals that exist but that's separate from the project as a whole right you can still adopt and be in production regardless of whether or not you have those other signals right and and, and i think why i'm pushing in this direction is that you are right those components might be adopted right but it's still only only one signal is implemented on those components like collector um the most kind of implemented base and the most adopted why people use as essentially sdk uh, and uh, collector is mostly for tracing capabilities right so all of this is across all the components all of i the don't kind of i don't agree with you uh but just because you know what i can say is that uh, we have built um, instrumentation around AWS monitoring backends such as CloudWatch or which handles metrics or uh, Prometheus, uh, our managed service for Prometheus and the collector components that uh, exist today are being added, uh, are being used for by customers for, you know, uh, again, supporting metrics. Now, there is a clear roadmap for metrics, uh, which is being currently worked on by the project and uh, a very clear roadmap and milestones that are, you know, have been established in the past few months uh, and work is in progress. And so is that happening for logs. So to say that there is no support is inaccurate. Right, there are a couple of plugins for metrics and logs. Well, there's more than a few, right? Like uh, there's a lot. Yeah, like like Google, for example, when they have customers who come in with Windows VMs, they tell them to use the Open Telemetry Collector, and they went and added like Windows uh, system metrics, right? Like it's it's more than just a handful. Yep. Right. Is there an overview or like a, a lot? I, I I feel as if part of our problem here is we are we are discussing on qualitative statements. Uh, a lot and not going towards quantitative statements. Yeah. So is there, for example, a list, an overview, a matrix of um, metric signals and of, of logging signals being used in production? Because I do think that this would alleviate part of, of Bartex and Peter's concerns. Mm, part. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going slowly here. I'm. Uh, Cat herding hasn't been on my, or has been on my- on Is my... it possible to deal with me? Yeah, I, I understand. No, 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 that's not a statement about you. It's just a statement about uh, spending two decades in open source. <laughs> <laughs> and always trying to get people to, to agree um, for those two decades. 
I mean, Richard, uh, again, I agree with you that, you know, we are happy to provide any quantitative, you know, measures or whatever that means, if we can define that clearly. And, and uh, you know, we, the specification, because the implementations, as Steve pointed out, follow the specification, there is certainly a compatibility uh, matrix or a matrix of uh, features which, you know, actually can be highlighted uh, if that's helpful in terms of support. Right. Okay. I think, you know, yes, I mean, definitely the number would be super nice, but my, my worry is that, you know, I always from the beginning was, you know, excited to see open telemetry, you know, uh, protocols to be, you know, kind of de facto standards, right? We know what to use for logging, for replicating, you know, log lines across systems and from client to the agent, let's say, the same for traces, the same for metrics. And suddenly we totally are, I mean, open telemetry looks like it's very unfocused on this point because we are adding collectors with um, tons of APIs and we kind of, we, we, we quantify the quality of if it's incubation or graduation by amount of APIs. This is not healthy for community. I, I at least so, that's my point. So actually it sounds like your, your comments are more that it didn't meet your expectations. Right, like as you said, you had these expectations for open telemetry, either not meeting them, but it's like we, but that shouldn't be blocking incubation. Well, it's it's. It, it, let me chime in just one sentence here, and it's like, if we have more projects in this pattern of you know the maximal feature set and the maximal set of integration, like, is that going to take the CNCF to a good place or a bad place? And like for me, there's a clear actually, answer to that. So I just I just want to be, make clarify something we talked about a few meetings ago. Like, we we should consider the logging part of open telemetry experimental. Like the community has very purposely sort of put it off in a thing where we're slow walking it and very slowly working on it because we're very focused on tracing. Tracing is now GA. Metrics is next. But I, I don't want to look at our ambition of eventually bringing in some logging components and doing some work in logging. I, I, I'm worried that that's really distracting from the core project, which was. SDKs, collectors, and protocols for traces and metrics. And right, the traces yeah, part is done. Tracing. Yes. Right, yeah, and we're actually at the point. If we reach incubation, that was yes. our main goal: is deprecate open tracing. And by actually us not reaching incubation, this is impacting the CNCF. Where open tracing has been maintained in two years, and this is also impacting all those users. Yeah, the other thing I'd add is I think we're also blurring the lines between incubation and graduation. This is not a graduation conversation. If it was, I think many of the points being raised here are completely valid. Yeah. Like you don't have any metric support that's stable yet. How, how can you graduate? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about incubation. And the criteria for that is having production deployments that are high quality. We do. It doesn't say it has to be high quality for every single thing. Like it is high quality to the point where customers today have adopted in production environments. Uh, so I'd like to make a proposal. I, I made a, an update here uh, and I put three separate bullets that we can try to talk about to see if maybe this gets us closer to a consensus. Uh, so I'll read it aloud just so we can talk uh, about it live. Just a moment, Did so, you deleted the other thing? Uh, it's this line. It's the exact same line. I just moved tracing from the end to oh, here, but I, I okay. didn't make it green because I think we should talk about it again. <laughs> I agreed just as a point of order, everyone who touches a green line, please uh, talk about it before you touch the green line because sure. they are. Yep. It doesn't matter to... now. Uh, what, no, no, it's, it's fine. We, we caught it, but this is uh, like my whole system is, is built on the green lines, uh, never, ever being touched. Which is why I made public or made explicit. Also, you added signal in hotel. So that that's my point. Like I literally talked about making the T uppercase to yeah. Please don't. But yeah, yeah let's cool. move into the. Yeah, so I removed the green, so that way we don't even have consensus on it. Uh, but I won't touch it again. Sorry about that. Uh, so I put a paragraph here at the top uh, that people should read real quick to see if there's any disagreements with that, and then we can talk about the three lines. The one point as I usually, but this is without my hat, as 
most of you will know, I usually focus on the wire formats first because this allows you to, to freely interchange uh, backends and, and libraries. I think they're the underlying thing of everything else, um, but I'm also fine with this order. Uh, other head back on. Yeah, and from a from a stability perspective, that's how Otel kind of treats it too. So the specification has to reach stability first before the actual implementation can. The specification yeah. is where like that data model and wire formats live. Um, so we follow the same model. It's just we kind of bucketed the whole thing underneath the signal, which makes it a little bit confusing here. Um, but okay, in the in the interest of time, let's try this. Uh, so basically, given that there are components and there are signals that the components are being used for, I try to distinguish between them. Uh, so maybe Richie, you want to kind of lead it if we want to go back to this one specifically first. <laughs> Um, I, I would actually suggest that we put the signal first because okay. the wire format obviously includes the data model and as such, this is, as you said, the basis for the rest. Sure. Um, okay, so as this is a slightly changed line, um, SIG observability has consensus that there is wide and organic adoption of the tracing signal in open telemetry. All agreed? Anyone disagreeing? Agree on my side. Oh. SIG observability has consensus that there is some adoption of the metric signal in open telemetry. Yeah. That, so this that, one might need clarification, okay. right? Because the specification is not stable. Uh, as Elevito was pointing out, there are people using metrics in production today, though. So I'm not sure how to draw that distinction. Uh, I don't know, Bartek, if you have some suggestions on like maybe explicitly saying the specification is not stable, but there are production users of metrics. I don't know how you want to phrase it. Yeah. I would still, yeah, I wonder if it, let's, if we would just scope this incubation um, bar on just metric, are we, happy as a community as seek observability to kind of put this label on metrics and i'm not sure about that maybe but well, that's, that's interesting adopt, yeah, yeah? That, that's interesting uh i think it's worth having a conversation about that what if we do just have line right, right now lines one and line three do we have to say anything about metrics and logs is that a requirement yes, 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 because because I would say, yeah sorry i mean with all my hats on at the same time, um, metrics, logs, and traces unification in a single set of, of unified client libraries, collectors, and a holistic design is, is the core goal of open telemetry as far as I understand it as such. It should at least be looked at. I'm completely fine just saying, well, it's future work and, and be done with it, but I think it should be mentioned. No objections. And I, I try to, to have a positive uh, statement baked in. Uh, that's what I'm currently marking. Oh, nice. I'm good with that. OK, so let's try for this one. Also, we are way over time, and I have a hard cut in two minutes. But let's try. SIG observability has, a cons has consensus. SIG observability has consensus that there is some adoption of the metrics signal in open telemetry, but stability and compatibility with open metrics and Prometheus has not been reached, but is planned. All yeah, agreed. It's work in, uh, Richard, it's work in progress, right? Hmm. I mean, it's being actively yeah, worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's fair. It is it's, not, it's not only yeah. planned, it's also being worked. Yeah, no, you're, you're right. That is and takes yeah makes sense of um, i can't type when people watch me how about this thank you that's even stronger i'll go with that okay so let's try again SIG observability has consensus that there is some adoption of the metric signal in open telemetry, but stability and compatibility with open metrics and Prometheus are work in progress and take note and SIG 
observability takes note of Prometheus working group within open telemetry. All agreed? Anyone disagreeing? Nice. Um, I will change the green in a second. Is this a fair statement? And I'll make it non-green in a second. Is experimental better than future? Because there is technically some amount of support for it already. Yeah, there yeah and there's work. Support. And, and there's ongoing work that is actually already in flight. Yeah with the stanza uh, logging agent being integrated yeah I mean, Jonah, I mean we heard voices that it was yeah postponed and delayed so far so but bartek as we said in the last meeting we actually show that there's a log sig right we talked about this in the last meeting there is a yeah. log sig that's yeah. actually being worked on Right, and yeah. so I'm I'm kind of missing the point that if we've shown that there is active work on it, how is that being viewed as being denied if there's actual right. like work what in a do, doc and photos? Mean, what do I mean? You shown like Yonach mentioned that he joined a meeting and there was nothing there. That's no, 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 no. That's not. Uh, that's Jonah not also proved log <laughs> like, Yeah. So, so we Jonah, also asked yeah, you for proof last time, and you didn't give us any proof. J Jonah Jonah said he joined the community call that was deleted six months ago, but was still on his calendar, and no one was there. Oh, okay. And I That's followed up with him. And Jonah blog. started joining the the maintainers meeting, which had replaced it six months ago. Yeah, <laughs> um, but but the log active, sig does have people. It's it's yeah, active. There's a very yeah. active uh, amount of work happening. Uh, I can send you you know specific projects that we have done, uh, as well as you know the uh, log model, log data model, as well as the stanza. Uh, you know, component being integrated into the collector right now. Okay. Also, yeah. Jonah approved log specs. Like he is actually viewed as like participating in GitHub yep. PRs. So that's like, I don't think we can use, like Jonah's quote might have been misplaced at the time, but I don't think that's fair to use it anymore. He, he mentioned a community meeting. It was, someone had modified it and it went back Are on people's calendars. Anyway. Two, two minutes over. Uh, I, I would like to avoid he said, she said uh, situations. How about uh, Alodita takes an action item on um, on putting some quantitative data yeah, on this? Sure. Far as I, okay, perfect. Yeah. And we will try and actually finish this the next time. Can we schedule an ad hoc? This has taken two months. Right, like Fine. this has impacted Hotel's ability ability to actually be a part of KubeCon North EU in terms of the maintainer track, which was one of like, which actually impacts his ability to like get more participation. I heard Have that, uh, you know, I, oh, by the way, I heard that many open telemetry talks were actually approved where others were uh, um, because as they the were the part of the maintainer track. So I would look um, on the numbers first. Um, you mean as KubeCon co-chair, the person who spent all of last week approving these talks? I mean, I would, I would love to know that because I heard, you know, uh, the other open. I mean, yeah, I, this is like there are the no, but there's there. a difference between maintainers tracks and actual talks accepted. Talks accepted are those based on people who submitted things. Open telemetry as a sandbox project isn't allowed as a maintainers track talk. I understand, but I'm saying that uh, I suppose that, and that's fair that you know, uh, open telemetry talks were agreed and like kind of. Um, approved more on the normal track because they are not part of the maintainers track. There are so many rejections nope. because Thanos and Prometheus and Jager and others are already on maintainers track. Let's be fair. That actually isn't the actual process. I'm glad to walk you through the process as KubeCon co-chair who walks through choosing the talks. But what we do is we actually, from the observability, uh, there's a program committee that gives us a top 10 to 15 talks and we go through right based on their rating and then after choose those things there. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I just want to, I think that would be fair um, that, you know, to give open telemetry um, voice because of there is no maintainers. So that's, I, I wouldn't be worried. But I'm telling that. you, that's not how we do it. I mean, as I the would, person yeah. who chooses the talks, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you that's actually not how we do it. So I'm sorry, I don't know where like you're getting this information, but that's not how we do it. You can talk to Steven and I whenever you want, but that's not how we choose talks for KubeCon. 
I think you're discussing on the level of process and on the level of perceived outcome in parallel. So, yeah. Um, for the. So, Richard, would it be helpful to highlight, you know, what we are, uh, what opportunities we are missing? Uh, also, very quantitatively, you know, in terms of the project opportunities, uh, which are really important for the project uh, and, you know, help in, in the work that is being done on the project to make progress. I mean, it, it, I, I, I think there's a lot of qualitative discussion. <clears throat> on the on the level of, of extra PR, yes, no. I don't think that matters on the level of the due diligence. That being said, I, I do note that we take quite some time to, to discuss this so completely orthogonal from the former point. Um, I do think it would make sense to, to try and speed things up. And if um, interjecting a meeting helps with that effort, that seems to make sense. Um, so the same time slot next week is open telemetry metrics data model SIG. That's the only clash which I can see offhand. Um, but it's not my call to make, it should be off the call here. So can we do a show of hands for saying yes, no on, we lost like half of the people. Same, same time so next week. Yeah, let me do gallery view, just a second. I mean, we can talk offline on the mailing list. Yeah, we can we can definitely make it more often, yeah. I just, I just- I, 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 So everyone who's in favor of having this, this call next week as an interjection, uh, please raise your hand. We sent out via the email list as well, so that not- Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, anyone who's against? Okay, so uh, like for for the recording, two thirds are in favor, no one is against. Does anyone want to abstain? Perfect, so no abstinations. Um, so uh, I'll talk to Amy to, to put an intermediate uh, thing into the calendar. But Bartek's point is also valid. Uh, we should try and, and as always move more out of the calls and into into the mailing list, into the document, blah, 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 blah. I would much prefer to just go through comments and such and just close stuff, which has been discussed during the week and consensus has been reached than, than discussing everything in depth every, every single call. Okay, thank you very much and see you in one week, not two. Thanks. Thank you, Richard. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.